Hello and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday. This is a weekly show which covers all the news from Star Citizen from the week just past. I am your host, Mac, so let's get on with it. This week, we get even closer to the Evacotti flight test release. Reverse the verse delves into the Argo SRV, plus we hear about network optimization improvements. So this week's Around the Verse was rather short. Uh, it started off by talking about this NPC navigation. They want to ensure that the AI navigate around objects and other players or NPCs in the environment. This is what's called collision avoidance and version 2 of this is slated to come in 3.5. They're basically programming the AI to acknowledge objects within their path and efficiently and realistically navigate around them. If the AI is walking along a set path, if something comes in front of it, be it a, an object, a person or an NPC, the AI then rebuilds the path to get the AI to naturally move around, play the animations as appropriate, uh, and do whatever the situation is needed. This, I'm not really sure how or if we'll really notice that much of a change in 3.5. Probably not, but it's one of those things that when done correctly, it just looks right. Um, if it's done badly, it really stands out. So as much as it's cool to see, I don't think it's going to be that obvious. Uh, we also got an update for network updates. Coming in 3.5, they're doing some network service improvements to help optimize the game further. This includes object container streaming stalls. So basically, as you quantum travel in and out of a location, as the entities are spawned in and out as well, the game can freeze uh, pretty drastically. They're focused on the network side, causing all of this and reducing them as much as possible and hopefully eliminating them as much as possible as well. Also for 3.5 is the async disconnect refactor. Basically changing the disconnection code, making it more robust and fixing some server and client crashes and also stopping an infinite loading screen bug as well. So all really good updates. The more optimizations we get, the better the game will be to play. So for the last bit of ATV, we looked into Lyria. This is a moon of ArtCorp. They're working on the snow visual effects and the geysers found on Lyria. The effect is made up of steam and water and due to the temperatures of Lyria, the droplets of water that are pushed out of the geysers instantly freeze and turn to snow. Now this effect needs to work with all kinds of environments and weather types like wind for example, but he did say that he wants it to look a little different to the geysers we see on Earth just to add a little variety and unusualness. Now lastly we got another update on the thruster damage and misfires. This, he said, has progressed since we last saw it, and it does look a lot more cleaner now. Now he has a, a slider which can either be increased or decreased the thruster health in real time from 0 to 100. This means that he can see the thruster effects transitioning from pristine to no longer functioning. It reduces the iteration time so much more as well and just makes it easier to see what is needed where, giving more indication to what is going on with your ship and other people ships and allowing him to iterate on that much faster. So excellent tool development there. Anyway, that was around the verse. Let's get on to the Argo SRV in Reverse the Verse. So for Reverse the Verse this week, we had John Crew, but unfortunately he did have to catch a flight. So the show is only 40 minutes long, but they did mention that this show is going to be focused on the Argo SRV, which is the latest concept ship. And the questions on the ships for 3.5, like the Defender, the 300 series and the Reliance, will be asked on another show, hopefully within about two to three weeks' time. It's a bit of a shame, uh, especially as we will be getting a Q&A post for the Argo SRV anyway, but let's get on with it. So the first question is, will the tractor beam tech on the SRV be the same for the other ships like the Cutlass and the Caterpillar? And he says, yes, they're all the same mechanics. The differences are just power and quantities. With the SRV, the only ship focused on around the tractor, all the ship systems and components will be used to power that feature. The tractor beams, they say, are very power intensive, uh, with other ships having them as another facet and only being able to handle smaller items. Although the reclaimer, that will be able to tractor larger objects and then draw them to the jaw, the SRV has a much more powerful one that can use, to, you know, for transporting ships around. Next question is, what can the SRV tractor? Now, they say these are just the intentions so far, not 100% confirmed. Things will obviously change as, as development happens. But basically, they say it can move anything that is physicalized in the world. This doesn't mean you'll be able to pick up buildings at landing locations, but more ground vehicles, ships, and cargo. If a ship has been intentionally or accidentally immobilized, you'll be able to track to them. They did say that they see it being able to track to a Cutlass as the largest ship 
confidently in atmosphere with gravity as well. There's obviously many other factors like whether the cargo in the Cutlass is loaded with dense materials or if the planet or moon has a higher gravity and so forth. So many different factors affecting this. But they did say it could potentially tow a constellation if it's in space where, you know, gravity and friction aren't a problem. Now, they did mention about it being willingly tracted. So something has to be willingly tracted. And they just wanted to know what that means. And it basically means that the Argo will struggle to tractor a ship if it still has its shields up. They said they'll have to try and figure out a way of getting this into the law. But the, the shields themselves will affect the tractor beam and kind of reduce its power. Obviously, if someone is trying to track to you, you'll be able to just easily break free uh, just by powering on your ship and flying it from the other, other direction. But if you land and are worried about someone coming along within an SRV and you're leaving your ship just lying around, then he says, leave your shields on. That way, you're more likely not going to be able to get taken away. But don't forget that space is big. The amount of land mass we'll have with all the planets and moons is massive as well. I don't expect the SRV to have a scanner that's able to just search for random ships lying around. So the chances of you being somewhere in the middle of nowhere and an SRV coming along and finding you is slim. If you're in a place where there's more people, there's a good chance that you'll have a law system in place there. And obviously, if, if you report it as stolen as such, this is coming from my own mind, um, then you'll be able to report this as going missing. Um, and they'll be able to find and that person will get a criminal record as such for tractoring people's ships. So there's, there's more factors into it than just being able to steal people's ships. But at the end of it all, keep your shields on, it'll struggle more. Now, there's no plans for a range of tractor beam upgrades at the moment, but they're not to say in the future. Same goes for ships like the Prospector. There may be a variety of mining lasers later on down the line, but nothing is confirmed yet. But obviously, Prospector, for example, can only mine asteroids and planetary rocks. We have no way of extracting liquid or gas yet, so there might be a tool coming later down for them ones. A single SRV or multiple SRVs towing a ship can also quantum travel as well. That, they said, was kind of a must. They don't know whether you'll be able to go through full jump points, but you will be able to quantum travel. Someone asked if the SRV would be able to move outposts uh, that the Pioneer has placed. And they say, not likely. The Pioneer basically drills these outposts into the ground. The only thing that can move them is a Pioneer to come and undrill them, move them on. Now, the tractor beam isn't likely to be able to give direct damage to another ship. But if you're not managing your tractor beam right uh, when handling a ship in atmosphere, for example, and the ship can fall or tilt a rock back over again, then it could be quite catastrophic if it falls back down to the planet and destroys. So you've got to be careful with it. Uh, can the SRV be used to move the larger cargo containers? Now, yes, they say. This is one of the reasons why they wanted it. You should be able to see at docks NPCs and players hopefully as well being able to use SRVs to move the, the cargo crates from an hull E back and forth as and when needed. So I think what we'll find is when we get to docks, and this is something they have mentioned a while ago, is you will see things like the SRV taking these cargo boxes back and forth, which I think will look quite cool. And hopefully we'll be able to get a nice 9 to 5 style job doing that. Now the SRV doesn't have a docking collar, its entry is through a sealed underside lift. Someone asked if you could help a ship that is overladen with cargo out of orbit. And now this is, there are three main factors for the creation of this ship. One of them was for ships that run out of fuel or become disabled, taking them back to safety. For flipping bigger ships back on the right way up, like the re Reclaimer. And also to help larger ships get out of orbit if they're struggling. Because they're, they're, you know, when we start getting mass and the new flight model, we're going to see ships struggling, trying to get out of atmospheres of some planets. And as more gravity, density, cargo in your ship starts taking effect, it's going to be very much needed. Uh, can the tractor beam be used to repulse things? Now, they say it is a plan for it to have a push feature, not really repulsing, but it will be sort of a hard limit. It can't push things as such, more having the option to just slightly push, pull, roll, pitch, and yaw while it's within the tractor beam itself to just get it into the right position. Now, someone asked if it could, if the tractor beam could misfire. We've heard a lot about thrusters misfiring and basically every item in the game will have a possibility of what they're calling a misfire. This is just a sort of percentage chance of an event happening to an item caused by wear, degradation, damage or distortion. They're not too sure what the tractor beam misfire event will be like. It could just be that it gets disabled. But yes, that will be a thing and we'll have to see what happens. 
Uh, will it be best to be played in first person or third person? Now they say it's like a remote turret. You'll go into a first person screen mode to control the tractor beam and bring the ship into place. It says you can do it in third person, but it will be easier in first. Uh, how quick will the process of hooking a ship with the tractor beam be? Now they say it's not going to be an instant thing. Firing up the tractor beam will be quite quick, but then you'll need to balance and configure the power and so forth, depending on the item that you're tractoring, and you'll need to try and get it right before you can really start moving on. Uh, could you tow multiple small objects clustered together? Now they say they want this to be capable of doing so. The beam itself, the tractor beam is more of a, a sphere of influence, not a point of influence. So potentially that should be a case. Final question is to do with an EMP. Will this deactivate the tractor beam? And they say yes. Uh, but there's some theories as to people are asking sort of random questions as to whether it's possible. And so they do say you should be able, to, or there should be no reason why you are not able to tow an Idris or a Javelin, you know, if it's disabled, it's shields and so forth. All of these sort of theories will have to be tested. They're not like 100% guaranteed. And sometimes they might just not allow it for the sake of it being a bit trolley or and fun but we will see but you could carry a tank behind you and have it firing while it's being towed but obviously the tank will have no shields up nor is it designed to be in space as, sh as such so it won't be performing at its best capacity you could load up potentially a kraken with loads of tonks as have the kraken as a broadside style ship you should be able to tow asteroids you can already uh, but not all asteroids are able to be moved around and they're still really not sure about tractoring humans. It's very unlikely to be able to, if it's possible, they will figure out a way within law as a reason why it shouldn't happen. Uh, anyway, that was the RTV for the Argo SRV. As I say, there's going to be a Q&A anyway, answering pretty much repeating a lot of these questions. It's good to have some of the questions, but I'm sure they'll just be repeated. I'm excited to hear more about the 3.5 ships, but that was it. Let's move on. So also this week, we have a new data cache law post. January's Squadron 42 monthly report is available. And finally, for all subscribers, the latest jump point is released. So that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a video. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share the video with all your friends. If you like what I do and want to help me make it better, follow the link below to my Patreon page to learn more.